Hey, what's up guys? Paul from the Sysadmin channel bringing you the best tips and tools for your Sysadmin journey. In this channel, we cover a lot of how-tos, tutorials, as well as troubleshooting tips and tricks. So if you're new, consider subscribing. So I'd like you to imagine a scenario where you just acquired a small office in a remote location and your boss wants you to set up a new distribution point and basically get those guys all up to speed with software deployments, application deployments, and basically everything related to SCCM. The good news is that you already have a 2016 server set up in that location and now it's just a matter of getting it all set up and making sure it's working correctly. By the way, if you want to go more into detail on everything I'm showing you in this video, go ahead and pick up a copy of Learn SCCM in a Month of Lunches or SCCM Unleashed. All right, so like I said, our imaginary boss had set up a 2016 server in our imaginary remote location. So the first thing we're going to want to check is actually we want to just make sure that there is a dedicated SCCM drive in that new distribution point. This is where we're going to host all of the content that we distribute and currently it's set to only 40 gigs. In the future, if we need to, we can expand that. Uh, that's not a problem. We also want to make sure that SCCM doesn't write any files to the C drive. So in order to do that, we created a no underscore SMS on drive dot SMS file. And as you can see here, if I open it up with notepad, it is just an empty file. Uh, this is just letting SCCM know not to write any files to the C drive. So once we got that, we'll go ahead and close Windows Explorer. And then from here, we're going to want to go into computer management and add our SCCM site server as a local administrator to this brand new distribution point. So to do that, we'll open up computer management. From there, we'll go to local users and groups and then to groups again. And then from there, we'll open up uh, administrators. Next up, we're going to want to click on add and then object types. And then within our object types, we'll click on computers to allow us to select a computer object. We'll go ahead and enter in pack-scm01 as a computer name. And then we'll check the name just to make sure that it verifies and resolves successfully. So once that's done, we'll go ahead and click OK to that. Um, we'll click OK one more time. And then we'll go ahead and exit out of computer management. All right, so now that we got the site server added to the distribution point, the next thing we want to do is check to see if remote differential compression is installed on this new distribution point. So here we'll just fly through the roles and features uh, wizard. And here you can see that remote differential compression is already installed by default on server 2016. So we'll just go ahead and cancel that and move on. So once we got that out of the way, we'll go ahead and open up a new PowerShell window. And we basically just want to check to see if two ports are open. So in order to do that, we'll run a test dash net connection localhost dash port 445. And for those of you not familiar with port 445, it is used for file sharing. We're also going to want to check to see if RPC is allowed. So we'll go ahead and up arrow and instead of port 445, we'll use port 135. And then you can see here that the TCP test did succeed. And now we'll go ahead and close PowerShell and that about wraps it up for the prerequisites. So the next thing we're going to want to do is go into our SCCM server and finally getting around to adding a distribution point. So to do that, we'll click on administration. We'll go ahead and click on sites and then create a site system server. We'll enter in the name of our distribution point. So here I've got pack-sccm02. I'll click on browse and then cancel so it can enter in the fully qualified domain name. I'll go ahead and leave the site code as pack-us1 since that is the site code that I have. And I'll go ahead and leave the radio button uh, selected to use the server's computer account to install the site system. We're not going to be using any internet proxies, so we'll click next here. And since the whole point of this video is to install a new distribution point, we'll go ahead and select that and uh, click next. We'll want to select the box to install and configure IIS uh, if it's required by Configuration Manager. In this case, it will be. We'll go ahead and leave the default for HTTP uh, selected since we don't have a PKI. And for the self-signed certificate, we'll go ahead and leave that the default as well. That all looks good, so we'll go ahead and click Next here. Next up, we're prompted to specify the settings for the distribution point. Um, in this case, I'm going to set it to 1 gig or 1024 megabytes. That looks like a good reservation uh, for the primary content library location. We'll go ahead and leave that automatic 
you can set this to whatever drive you want but in our case since we're only using the e drive which is the dedicated sccm drive um, it's not necessary to specify it next up we have the option to configure a pool distribution point what this basically does is it allows sccm to automatically pull uh, the content from other distribution points so if you wanted to we can check that enable box add our primary sccm01 distribution point and then everything will pull from that distribution point automatically um, in our case, we actually want to manually specify what gets pushed out to different distribution points. So we'll go ahead and leave that unchecked and uh, click next. We're not going to be setting up any Pixie boot options on this distribution point. So we'll go ahead and click next here. We also won't be setting up any multicast deployments. So we'll select next there. We will, however, want to validate the content on a schedule. So we'll go ahead and select that box. And we'll leave the content validation priority to the lowest, which is the current default. Uh, that all looks good, so we'll go ahead and click Next here. The next step for specifying a boundary group is probably the most important step in this setup. This will basically let all SCCM clients know which distribution point to go to. So if you recall in our imaginary scenario, this DP will be set up for the SCCM clients in that remote site. This is so we're not trying to push content over an unnecessary WAN links if we don't have to. So once you've added the correct boundary groups, we'll go ahead and click next here and um, everything should finish successfully. All right, so now that we added the DP, we'll go ahead and go to servers and site system roles on the left-hand side. And here we just wanna make sure that the computer you specified as a distribution point is actually added as a site server. So if we go ahead and expand that, we can see that pack dash sccm 2 is installed and the role is set up as a distribution point on the bottom. And just to verify things, we'll go ahead and open up our log files and we'll open up the dist manager.log. So we'll go ahead and open up that with CM trace. And basically we can see here that the distribution point is installed successfully. So if we poke around here, uh, we can see here that the DP is registered successfully. Um, so once you see that, you pretty much are good to go. We'll go ahead and close CM trace. And then we'll go ahead and minimize uh, Windows Explorer. And if you recall previously, we set up our distribution point to not pull from other distribution points. So in other words, we basically have to go to each application or each deployment setting that we want to and manually distribute our content. So in our case, we'll go ahead and go into deployment packages within software updates, and then we'll select all of the deployed applications that we previously set. We'll go ahead and right click that, and then we want to distribute the content. And here with all of our packages selected, we'll go ahead and click next. We'll want to select add and then distribution point. And now you can see that our second distribution point is available and ready. So we'll go ahead and select that and click OK. We'll go ahead and click Next, and then Next again, and then finally we can close the wizard. So we went ahead and did that for uh, software updates. Now we'll go ahead and go into Application Management. And here we'll want to check to see if we want to distribute any of our content. Uh, previously we made a video on how to deploy Microsoft Office 2019 using SCCM and PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit. If you guys haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. I'll link a card up above. But this is the reason why non-pool distribution points are a little bit more flexible because we can have the flexibility to deploy an application on a case-by-case -case basis and allows us to be a little bit more nitty-gritty on what we distribute. All right, guys, like, subscribe, and that's the end of my video.